Lesson 4. Intervals in the real number line. The real number line is a representation of the real numbers. Typically we begin at some number like 0 and extend a line out to the left and to the right and add some more numbers to indicate the scale. We put arrows on the left and the right to indicate that the line extends out to negative infinity and positive infinity. Here we use negative and positive infinity to mean real numbers that are as small or as large as we would like to make them. Using the real number line, we can plot numbers with dots like this for 3 or this for negative 1. We can even plot sets of numbers on the number line like this. The numbers on the number line decrease to the left and increase to the right. If we have two numbers plotted on the number line, the larger number is the one on the right. The distance between them is defined as the larger minus the smaller. The distance between two points on the number line also defines the length of an interval. An interval is the set of real numbers between two real numbers which we can define like this. We can graph intervals on the real number line by drawing a line segment like this. For example, the graph of the set of real numbers between 0 and 3 looks like this. The set notation is read as the set of all x such that x is a real number and x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3. Since intervals are a very common type of set, there's a shorthand notation for this interval which looks like this. More specifically, this is called a closed interval because it includes the endpoints. When we include an endpoint of an interval, we use the square brackets in the interval notation to indicate that the endpoint is included. When we graph it, we use filled in dots to indicate that the endpoint is included. All of these representations indicate the same closed interval. Alternatively, we can eliminate the endpoints from the interval. In this case, we use the parentheses in the interval notation to indicate that the endpoints are excluded. In the graph, we use empty circles to indicate that the endpoints are excluded. When we exclude both of the endpoints like this, the interval is called an open interval. Sometimes we want to include one endpoint and exclude the other. In this case, the interval is called a half-open interval, regardless of which point is included. In addition, we can have unbounded intervals like this one. This specifies the set of all real numbers greater than 1. In interval notation, we use an infinity symbol to show that the interval is unbounded above. Just as we have intervals that are unbounded above, we can have intervals that are unbounded below. For these intervals, we use negative infinity to indicate that the interval is unbounded below. We can even write an interval that is unbounded on both sides, like this. This interval is the entire set of real numbers. This concludes the lesson.